Watching Gears, brought to you by Holly Performance Products. Fuel your passion. And Cornwell Tools, the choice of professionals. There's no question that wheels and tires have a huge impact on the look and feel of a vehicle. And the aftermarket is full of bolt-on choices. But what if you want to completely change the look and the feel of the vehicle and go with a different wheel and tire combination? Well, that's usually more involved than just bolting something on. We're going to show you how to do that. Now, what we have here is a classic old crusty truck that has a ton of potential, and it's definitely a candidate for a wheel and tire upgrade. Now, what we've got is a late 60s M715 Army truck that's been outfitted with a civilian J truck cab and the 401 V8. Now, since Jeep made both the military and civilian models of this truck, most of the parts are interchangeable. Now, one of the cool things about the M715 is that it came from the factory with a Dana 60 in the front and a Dana 70 in the rear. So, they're plenty strong. But those old military split safety rims don't give you a lot of tire options especially if you want to fill out the big radius fender wells. Now, most people's thoughts on a project like this is to just swap in some newer Dana 60 axles or rock wells or something like that. The problem is those are getting hard to find and they're expensive. Then you got to put them in, you got to build a suspension for them, and then you got to get wheels and tires for those. So it seems like a waste to do all that if you can make these original axles work, and you can because there's a lot of companies out there like Vintage Power Wagons or BJ's Off-Road that specialize in M715 trucks and full-size Jeeps. So, we are not gonna swap the axles, but we are gonna do some about those wheels. Okay, the problem with most military vehicles is that the bolt patterns are weird. So you're not gonna find a custom replacement wheel for that bolt pattern in a catalog somewhere, you're just not. So you're gonna have to have something custom made which means you're gonna to have to do some measurements and do some calculating to get what you want. Here's how to do it. Okay, the first thing you need to decide is what the goal is here. How do you want the new wheels and tires to fit? Now on this old crusty truck, we wanna get rid of this old tall skinny look and go wider and taller to fill out these big huge radius fender wells. But how big and wide do we go? Well, if you'll measure from the center of the axle to the tightest part on the fender, you can see that's a roughly 24 inches. And if we double that, that tells us that a 48 inch tall tire will fit in this wheel well with no clearance. Now, since we want clearance, we're gonna drop down to a 41 inch tall tire. That's gonna fit really nice and give us plenty of clearance. Okay, for tire width, we want something nice and fat. Something about 14 inches wide once it's all mounted up and something that fits the bill perfectly are these IROX from Intergo Tire. As you can see, they're 41 inches tall, 14 and a half inches wide, and have that great aggressive tread that Intergo is so famous for. As you can see, this is kind of what the truck's gonna look like at the new ride height, so <laughs> that's gonna be great. Okay, now that we have the tire decided, we're gonna set it aside and get those stock wheels off. Now, to fill these new tires out properly, we need at least an 11 inch wide rim. And as you can see, those stock brake drums are huge. So we're gonna jump up from the original 16 inch rim to a 20 inch rim. So the new rims that we need are 20 by 11s. Okay, once you've decided on your rim and tire size, now you're ready for your backspacing. Now obviously, you wanna set it to where you're not hitting any suspension components or body panels or anything like that, but this is also where you can set the stance of the vehicle. Now to get the wider look that we're after, we want the rubber to come out three to five inches past this fender well. So by measuring the distance from the wheel flange to the fender edge and factoring in the width of the new wheels and tires, I was able to come up with a four inch backspace and that's gonna give us about four inches of rubber sticking past the fender and roughly 10 inches inside the fender for a fat, aggressive look. So we need a 20 by 11 inch wheel with a four inch backspace to fit a stock M715 bolt pattern. Where the heck are you gonna find something like that? Easy, Red Barn Customs, check it out. Luke Walker started Red Barn Customs years ago because he couldn't find any wheels for his truck. One of the things that makes Red Barn Customs so unique 
is the fact that they will make wheels for virtually anything. They start with a precision cut center and then they hand weld that to the rim. If you need more strength, they can add gussets, rock rings, all kinds of things. Also, this adds to the cool factor. And these aren't weak, flimsy wheels either. These are heavy duty, hardcore wheels built to take whatever abuse you can throw at them. They're made for jumping, yeah. crashing into things, hitting things without bending. Yeah. The tire's gonna take the abuse where the rim won't or something else will fail. Mm -hmm. Now, as you can see, this is a really cool looking wheel and super heavy duty, weighing it at almost 70 pounds. But the best part is, if you take your time with the measurements, you know they're gonna fit exactly like you want them to. And once we send those wheels off and get them powder coated and mount these tires on there, you're gonna be shocked how good old Krusty's gonna look. In the automotive world, you don't have to look very hard to see that tools have changed a lot over the years, and subsequently, so have toolboxes. From early tool bags that provided a way to carry most tools to the work site, to early locking boxes that held all the high-tech tools of the day, mechanics have always needed tools and a place to store them. And Cornwell has been there since the beginning, supplying both tools and boxes to professionals and enthusiasts alike. You don't necessarily have to be a professional mechanic or technician to get it, but you do have to purchase it from an authorized Cornwell franchisee. And for the most part, those franchisees are calling on the professional automotive and technician. And you know how that trickles down to the guy in his garage if he sees it Oh, there, certainly, like, yeah. He wants the big box. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so. absolutely. But in an ever-changing world, cars change. Tools change, technology changes. So Cornwell figured it was time to change the way people thought about tool storage. So they came out with the Platinum Series toolboxes. Now, the conventional way of thinking for tool storage was you bought yourself a toolbox, and then once it was full of tools, you sold the box and got a bigger box. And it was a real pain to transfer all the tools from this box to the new box. And if you tried to get another box that matched this one, well, good luck, because nothing was consistent, so nothing was interchangeable. The Platinum Series boxes changes all that. Take a look. The Platinum Series is based off of a deep 30-inch drawer, which makes sense because drawers are where all the storage takes place. And having a consistent depth and offering different heights and widths keeps production simple and interchangeability easy. The drawers are housed in an extremely strong roll cage to not only support the drawers, wow, but also allow the top of the box to support tremendous weight. It's unbelievably durable uh, and can handle a tremendous amount of weight and abuse. Explain roll cage construction to me. Because I get a certain thing in mind, I think of like a roll cage in a race car. That's exactly right. I mean, we literally have three roll cages in the toolbox set at the front and the back and one in the middle. And it just makes for a very strong uh, toolbox. And on top of that, we still do double wall construction. So you're getting both double wall and a roll cage. Now, I know you're probably thinking, well, that sounds great, but what about that interchangeability thing? Well, we're getting to that. Let me show you all the players here. The smallest roller in the Platinum Series is this 40-inch tool cart. Then you have a 56-inch roller cabinet that you can add an upper chest to. You have a 67-inch roller cabinet that you can add a canopy to. And you have an 84-inch roller cabinet with a canopy you can add to that. Now these canopies are redesigned to open vertically so you don't hit your head, but you still have some storage space on the back side. Then of course you have storage lockers that you can add to the side of any of the boxes and they have the same locking drawers and features that the boxes do. Not many tool companies you can hang a locker on the side of a uh, tool cart. You know, and the tool cart having the roll cage construction has that strength. You can hang a locker on the side. On the side of the tool cart? On the side of the 40 inch wide tool cart. You can hang a 26 inch wide locker. Now, here is where this gets really cool. Since all of the rolling carts and accessories in the Platinum Series are based off of this 30 inch drawer that we told you about earlier, that means everything is a consistent height and a consistent depth. 
so you can attach pieces and you can stack them in whatever configuration you want to, which means you can literally build yourself a custom tool station as your tool collection grows. For example, boxes can be bolted together in any configuration, lockers can go on the ends or in between the boxes, and canopies can be interchanged. Power sources are another important part of modern tools, and the Platinum Series is loaded here as well. Each box has a dedicated drawer with plugs and USB ports, and up on top there's a plug strip that will mount to the top or to the canopy. The tool cart has power plugs as well as a tool shelf, and even the lockers have an optional power shelf for tools and accessories. And with the Platinum Series, you're going to run out of wall space before you run out of boxes. Hey, welcome back to Gears, where we are taking a look at Cornwell's new Platinum Series tool storage system that allows you to buy a toolbox and then you just add to it as you get more tools and you need more storage. This way you don't ever have to sell an old toolbox, you just buy whatever else you need that already matches what you got. The Platinum Series to Cornwell is our top of the line toolbox. Uh, it has all of the best features. It's 30 inches deep. It's one of the deepest toolboxes on the market. It has one of the finest latching mechanisms for keeping the drawers in place, highest capacity casters. It really represents the pinnacle of our toolbox uh, design. Now, in spite of all of the accessorizing that you can do here, some people just want a really big toolbox with a special name and a reputation and all that that implies. So Cornwell decided to put one of those together, and they call it the Iron Giant. Well, we were looking at competing in the bigger box area, and some of our competitors have, have large boxes as well, 144 inches, 136, somewhere around there. So being the company with the Iron Man, we figured it was kind of a nice segue that, you know, we'll put iron in there, and it's a giant box, so it yeah. just kind of came out as Iron Giant. All folks who are using tool storage, um, they think they've bought something that's big enough, and then yes. over time they outgrow it. You know, our, our largest roller cabinet is 84 inches wide, yeah. and when you outgrow that, well, what do you do? The Iron Giant is, of course, based on the Platinum Series, and it's the joining of the 56-inch box to the 84-inch box to create 140 inches of storage. Yeah. Now, since it's part of the Platinum Series, you can even add on to the Iron Giant if you have the space. But moving it might be a challenge. Now, having a ton of storage space is great. But if you're not utilizing the space in your toolbox properly, you're just wasting it. For example, this is what you'll find in most toolboxes. On this side, it's piled high and chaotic, which obviously holds a lot of tools, but you don't know what's here. You gotta dig through stuff to try to find it. You don't know what's missing. <laughs> this is a mess. Then on this side, you have it laid out nicely, you know what's here, you know what's missing, you can find your tools easily. But if you'll notice, you're losing about four inches of storage in this drawer, which is not good either. So Cornwell came out with the tool grid system to help solve this problem. Take a look. The tool grid is a perforated series of panels that are designed to lay in the bottom of your tool drawer and allow you to use a variety of clips and pegs and panels to stack and organize your tools. This means your sockets, your ratchets, your wrenches, your pliers, etc. All in a way that utilizes the space in the drawer more effectively. Take your top drawer that is packed as you want and if you organize it properly, you're gonna find out you've got more space in the, in the toolbox. So by using the tool grid, you can actually get more usable space out of your box. Plus, you know, if you're missing a tool. There are certain organizers that do a great job with sockets. There are so certain organizers that do a great job with pliers. Maybe there are some organizers that do a great job with wrenches, but the tool grid does a great job with everything. 
Now, obviously, it's going to take you some time to get everything laid out and organized. But once you do, you're going to be shocked how much storage space the Platinum Series actually has, which means you get more tools. And then when you run out of room, you get another box. And then you get some more tools. And then maybe a cabinet. And then more tools. And then another box. And then more tools. And then another box. And more tools. <laughs> And now, Parts Bin. Everybody knows that custom cars and trucks have the potential to be a lot of fun. They also have the potential to kill you if you don't protect yourself properly. That's why it's a law for every car and truck to have seat belts. But you need more than stock seat belts in a high performance or racing or off-road vehicle. No, you need a harness. And that's where RaceQuip comes in. Take a look. This is one of their SFI approved five point cam lock harnesses. And you'll see this is pretty versatile. For just regular street use, you just snap in and you got your lap belt. To release it, just a little quarter turn, off she comes. If you're gonna get more serious, maybe run road courses, you just snap in your shoulder harnesses. This is how you're gonna do most of your racing, your road courses, your autocrosses, that kind of thing. Then if you're gonna get really serious, they have what they call the anti-submarine belt. This is the one that comes up between your legs and keeps you from sliding out from under the harness if you have a hard impact. <laughs> yeah. Now, this is not the most pleasant experience. Might have you singing soprano a little bit, but it can save your life. The best part is, if you get upside down, you get off to the side, all of these release with just a little quarter turn and you're out of the vehicle. So if you're looking for the right harness for that resto mod or that race car, that crazy off-road vehicle, RaceQuip can help you find it. If you're driving a gasoline or diesel powered vehicle, you know one thing for sure. The fuel you're getting at the pump can be a little sketchy at times, resulting in poor performance. That's why Hot Shot Secret came out with these fuel treatments. For diesel, you have Diesel Extreme that you pour in every 6,000 miles to clean injectors and boost cetane. This has been proven to restore lost power up to 87%. Then to keep everything clean and boost cetane every day, you have this everyday diesel treatment to use whenever you fill up. For you gasoline guys, they have you covered as well with this Gasoline Extreme that you pour in every 10,000 miles to increase fuel economy, restore lost power, and keep your injectors and valves clean and working properly. If bad fuel is silently robbing you of power and performance, there is a solution for that. Hot Shot Secrets Fuel Additives. And now, what are you working on? Today's What Are You Working On comes from a kid named Diesel Carrasco. He's from down in Texas, and he is 15 years old. Well, first of all, I gotta say, anybody with the first name of Diesel has got to be cool. Now, he says that his dad helped him find this small work truck as a project that he can be working on as he gets ready to start driving. Now he said that he and his dad spend time on his days off running and getting parts at junkyards. His uncle comes by at night and they just have a great time working on the truck. Man, what a cool deal. Now, so far, check this out. They pulled the bed off and he power blasted and cleaned it right there in the driveway. He put on new shocks. He replaced the rear wheel cylinders and did the brakes. And he said, since they had the bed off, they went ahead and painted in a bed liner while it was standing up. As you can see, all right here in the driveway, man, it looks like they have a one bay garage and a driveway, which is really cool. Now, the best part is I got to read this to you exactly the way he wrote this. This is what he plans to use the truck for. He said he's going to drive it to school and possibly carry his lawnmower and pressure washer so he can make money to buy performance parts for his Mustang 
since Napa won't hire him until he's 18 years old. <laughs> what a great kid. That is a gearhead through and through, man. He's got his plan. He knows what he wants to do. And listen, that kid will make a great living as a mechanic or doing something with cars. So to recognize such a cool project and a cool kid, we're going to give you one of our deluxe project planning books so you can keep track of everything you're doing on that little Ford Ranger. Also, since you seem to be a Ford guy, we're going to give you one of our V8 Interceptor shirts with that Cougar there on the front. Then we're going to give you a gift card from Holly so you can pick up some parts to offset some of the cost of that project. And then finally, we're going to hook you up with a year's subscription to one of the Hub magazines, whether it be Wheel Hub, Chevy Hub, Mustang Hub, or Truck Hub. I can guess which one it will probably be. Now, for the rest of you guys, if you want to get in on this, get your project featured on the show, man, you got to send it to us. Go to our website, go to Gears Nation, and submit it into What Are You Working On? The website's also the place to find out more information on any products you may have seen on the show, any Gears merchandise, and how to join Gears Nation. Now, being a Gears Nation member gives you access to our new app through Android and iOS, where you can watch all of our Gears content commercial-free. Also, don't forget to check us out on Amazon Prime for Gears and the Restoration Series. Finally, don't forget to like us on Facebook and Instagram so you can get some behind-the-scenes footage on our weekly web series, Shifting Gears. And if you're a radio person, make sure you check out our new podcast, Tales of a Gearhead. All right, that wraps it up for us today, which means it is time for you to get out there and find your own project and start working on it. As you can see, you don't have to have a big shop, a lot of time, a lot of money to do something, just the willingness to get out and work on it. So get out there, start working on something. We'll see you next time.